beside us faithfully. There is the love of God. Deep calls to deep a saving breath and found beside us faithfully, there is the love of God. This is always true. God's love is always faithful and always present, even in confession, especially in confession. Let's pray together the prayer found in your bulletins. Eternal God, in every age you have raised up people to live and die in faith. We confess that we are indifferent to your will you call us to proclaim your name, but we are silent. You call us to do what is just, but we remain idle. You call us to live faithfully, but we are afraid. In your mercy, forgive us. Give us courage to follow your way, that joined with those from ages past who have served you with faith, hope, and love, we may inherit the kingdom you promise in Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. You may be seated. Will you join your hearts with me in prayer? Faithful God, how blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Sanctify us by your word and spirit so that we may glorify you in the company of the faithful. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. Our Old Testament reading today starts on page 1095 in your pew Bible. It's Isaiah chapter 25, verses six through nine. Listen for God's word. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Holy wisdom, holy word. In 1893, the Czechoslovakian composer Dvorak visited the New World. And he went home and he wrote the New World Symphony that reflected the things he had seen in this country. And he was so enamored of probably our greatest musical heritage, and that's the African American, American spiritual, that he wrote the second movement to be like a spiritual, 
Later on, words were added. He did not write the words. But it's called Going Home, about going to heaven. And it's perfect for All Saints Day. And with or without words, it's one of the world's most beautiful tunes. Going home, going home, I'm a going home, quiet like still someday, I'm just going home. It's not far, just close by, through an open door. Work all done, care laid by, gonna fret no more. Mother's there expecting me. Father's waiting to lots of folks gathered there, all the friends I knew. All the friends I knew. Nothing's lost, all's gained. No more fret nor pain. No more stumbling on the way. No more longing for the day. Gonna fret no more. Morning star. It's the way, restless dream all done, shadows fall, break of day, real life's just begun, there's no break, ain't no end, just a living on. And all of God's people said, Amen. I'd like to invite the children to come up and sit on the steps as we just take a moment together this morning.
Good morning. Okay, well, good morning. Um, today is All Saints Day. Does anybody know what a saint is? Or anybody want to take a guess? Charlie? A person. It's a good start, yes. Usually we think of people who are saints. And, yes. An important person? An important person, perhaps. Isla? Yes. Good morning. I'm glad to see you this morning. Yes. Hmm? Morning. <laughs> Good morning. Did you have an idea, Argyle? Maybe a person who doesn't sin. A lot of times we think of that word saint as somebody who's particularly holy, which is a word a lot of times we think of as maybe, maybe without sin. When we're thinking of saints, like Charlie said, we are thinking of people. And there's only one person who didn't sin. That's Jesus. Jesus. Yes, good job. Jesus. But our saints are people who, when we look back on their lives, they've done a whole lot of good. And the goodness in their lives are stories that we can use to be inspired by. Now, there are some famous saints, and we can learn a lot about those saints from our sisters and brothers who are Catholic. They, um, we think about people like St. Francis, who was known as a saint for animals and those who love animals, or St. Cecilia, who's a saint especially for those who are musicians. But sometimes we think of people that we knew and loved in our lives, like grandparents or great-grandparents or friends from church, who are really good and whose lives show us what it means to love God. And sometimes we think of them as, they're a saint too. They're somebody whose goodness has shaped our lives. And so as we gather today on All Saints Day, we're especially remembering those folks, the ones that we knew, who maybe we miss because they've died. But as Christians, we believe that they are in a place where there is endless joy and where they are able to always worship and love God. Are there any of those friends or folks that we think of as saints in our lives that y'all want us to especially remember as we pray this morning? Think of you. All right, that's all right. All right, well, let's join our hearts for a quick word of prayer as we remember the saints in our lives. Holy God, thank you for gifts like grandparents, great-grandparents, and friends. Sometimes we get sad when those people die. But even when we're sad, we remember that they are in heaven with you. We look forward with hope to see them again. We know they watch over us as you watch over us. Amen. Thanks, friends. Our New Testament reading today begins on page 1,669 in your pew Bibles, but I will be reading from a slightly different translation. This is from the Gospel of John, chapter 11, verses 32 through 37. Listen for God's word. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept Lazarus from dying? This is the word of truth, the gospel of our salvation. Thanks be to God. If you did open your pew Bibles to read along with that passage, you might have noticed the subtitle, Jesus Raises Lazarus from the Dead. And if you know this story, you might have noticed 
that we stopped in the middle before the raising from the dead. Maybe that was a little lazy of me. It is hard to preach about a resurrection like the one of Lazarus because it's the resurrection we always hope for when our loved ones die. If I'm being honest, and I do try to be honest with you, that is part of it. Perhaps not being lazy, but an unwillingness to say, maybe this will happen for you. Maybe death will be undone here and now. It's difficult to grapple with a story like this because I believe our God is a God of miracles, a God of resurrection, and I want to believe that even here and now, God could do this thing, raise someone from the dead in a way that Jesus raised Lazarus. I want to believe that, and I want you to believe that. But even if we were to believe that, where does it leave us today? As we consider the names of the ones we have lost, even if we believe God could do for us what God did for Mary and Martha and all who loved Lazarus, where does that leave us today? What good is a belief in resurrection when we haven't yet experienced the resurrection of our own beloved ones? We stopped in the middle of this story because that's where we are when it comes to grief. No matter your own personal story of loss, no matter where you are this morning, we are all in the middle of the story of life, death, and resurrection. The story core to our identity as believers in the one who swallows up death forever. We are in the middle of the story, the middle journey. The middle journey is a principle I learned from a devout yogi friend of mine. Perhaps what many of us know of yoga is someone stretching and bending their body into a shape that looks impossible, pausing, breathing intentionally. Sometimes in yoga, we manage to strike the pose. We manage to make the exact shape we are working towards making. But most of practicing yoga is the middle journey the time, the practice, between knowing what the pose is supposed to look like and working towards it, but not quite achieving it. Using an example as simple as stretching toward our toes, many of us might not be able to touch our toes today. The middle journey is every time we prepare for that stretch and every time we make that effort, every time we try to do it before we actually achieve it. This middle journey is where we are as believers in resurrection. We sort of know what resurrection will look like one day because of these Jesus stories. We will recognize death undone. It will be unmistakable. But we are not there yet. Today is All Saints Sunday, and in just a few short weeks, Advent will begin. Advent means arrival as in the coming or arrival of Christ. For the season of Advent, we celebrate the hope, peace, joy, and love that are rooted in knowing Christ has already come and in believing that Christ will come again. Christ has come. Christ will come again. Our belief, then, is in the already, what has already happened, and our hope is in the not yet what we are still waiting for. This is the middle journey, the already not yet of our faith, the middle of the story where life is real, death is too real, and we hope that resurrection is also real. Already, not yet. Christ has already come. Christ has not yet returned. The promise has been made that death's sting is lost, and yet death does still sing, sing. In the Isaiah passage Rebecca read, we hear this description of a feast of rich food and well-aged wines, a feast of the one who swallows death, a feast we remember with communion, 
a feast we represent and represent when we celebrate together here, a feast of hope and promises, a feast of tasting already what has not yet come to fruition. This promise is why we can gather and break bread when our loved ones die, because we are not only sad, but also hopeful. Because on this mountain, on the Lord's mountain, the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the covering we place when one has died, that shroud will be destroyed. It will be unnecessary because our God has swallowed death. This prophecy comes to Israelites living in exile among people who had different gods, including a death deity who swallowed its prey. Knowing this, we hear the poetry in the prophet's promise, our God out-destroys death by swallowing the swallower. To swallow is to take something into one's body. Death no longer resides in the underworld or the earth or the deep. God has taken death into God's own self. We see this far from Advent, at Easter, when our Holy Trinity suffers as Christ hangs on the cross, the Holy Three in One grieves as the Creator and the Spirit endure the death of Jesus. Jesus died. We affirm that he descended into hell and on the third day he rose again from the dead. On the third day he rose. So on the first day and the second day, the Creator and the Holy Spirit held death as you and I also hold death as our loved ones draw final breaths. God has taken death into God's own self. God has swallowed death, swallowed the swallower. This is the God for whom we have waited on the mountain where the feast has been prepared and the wine glasses are full of the finest vintage, a feast celebrating that God transforms death from a period to a semicolon. Grief still is. Grief is love transformed. It persists as love persists. But grief can no longer swallow us whole because God has swallowed death itself. And the God who weeps with us as Jesus wept with us will also wipe our tears. As we turn toward Advent and as we speak about anticipated returns to normal, we even spoke about this morning as we consider our worship service. We acknowledge the many griefs we carry from the past year plus, our collective little big griefs that came with canceled plans and loss of perceived certainty and strange school years and weird work conditions and whatever we want to call that exhaustion and anxiety that now comes from getting a cold and having to get tested and wonder and quarantine just in case. All of this, in addition to the loss of loved ones. Though these griefs are not all created equal, they are all part of our middle journey that includes our collective grief that there is no longer a normal to return to. Novelist Chimamanda Ngawi Adichie reflects on this intersection of the global pandemic and singular loss when her beloved aunt died from a brain aneurysm at a hospital that was shut down because of COVID. Adichie writes, we were stunned by sadness. The virus brought close the possibility of dying, the commonness of dying, but there was still a semblance of control. If you stayed home, if you washed your hands, with this death, the idea of control was gone. Death could just come hurtling at you on any day and at any time, an erosion, a vile rushing of floods, leaving our family forever misshapen. The layers of loss make life feel papery thin. The layers of loss make life feel papery thin. Layers of loss, personal losses experienced while the world is collectively at a loss. The layers of loss make life feel papery thin, insubstantial, unsure. 
but paper, still. Something that can collect a story. We collect the stories of those who have gone before. Their stories shape us and reflect the story of eternal hope, never-ending grace, and persistent love. When loss makes life feel papery thin, our tears follow the path of our Savior's own tears. We weep, and our tears will be wiped away by the one who has swallowed death. We weep, and still we gather for the feast. This feast which connects us to Christians in every time and place. This table that does not end. It connects us with all of the saints, even those who from their labors rest. What we remember here is not only Christ, but also the body of Christ that once was, and yet still is. We remember here the already not yet reality of our faith, that we weep and still we gather for the feast. We gather to remember the ones we have lost, who now taste the bread of heaven in heaven, while tasting for ourselves the promise of resurrection and reunion while swallowing for ourselves the wine poured by the God who will destroy the shroud and swallow up death forever. Amen. Will you please rise as we affirm our faith using words from the Scots Confession printed in your bulletins. We undoubtedly believe since it was impossible that the sorrows of death should retain in bondage the author of life, that our Lord, Lord just crucified, dead, and buried, who descended into hell, did rise again for our justification, and the destruction of him who was the author of death, and brought life again to us who were subject to death and its bondage. We know that Christ's resurrection was confirmed by the testimony of the enemies of Jesus and by the resurrection of the dead, whose sepulchres did open, and they did rise and appear to many within the city of Jerusalem. It was also confirmed by the testimony of angels and by the senses and judgment of the apostles and of others who had conversation and did eat and drink with Jesus after the resurrection. You may be seated. We will now honor those who have died in the past year. I will read the names, and Bryson will ring the bell. At the end of our list, there will be an opportunity for you to say aloud other names not listed here that you hold in your hearts. Margaret Abels. Phyllis Cummings. Herb Greenlee. Todd Greenlee. Pat Johnson. Frida McGehee. Eldon Reemsma. Jim Ralston. Wilbur Reed. Dick Sally. We ring the bell for the more than five million worldwide who have died because of the coronavirus. Please say aloud the names of those you hold in your hearts.
we ring the bell for all who have died. O oh, blessed communion, fellowship divine, we feebly struggle while they in glory shine. Yet all are one in thee, for all are thine. Alleluia, alleluia, amen. We also take this opportunity to dedicate the gifts that have been given in the past year. I'll bring your attention to the wording in your bulletin. The Memorial Committee of Session would like to dedicate the gifts of the pastor's relocation costs, iPads and accessories for the Argyle Preschool, and red carnations for Memorial Day. To the memory of Dave Cummings, Shirley Ashburn, and Betty and Wally Ralston. The Memorial Committee of Session dedicates these gifts in memory of these saints as witness to the resurrection of Christ Jesus. Amen. Let's rise and sing together hymn number 326 for all the saints. You may be seated. Remembering the stories of the saints, of the faithful, may we be inspired. May we use this time to consider how God is moving us to be part of the story of never-ending love and grace. Let's give of our time, talent, and resources. Let's give in faith.
Eternal God, we are grateful for the gift of everlasting life, grateful that we have eternity to serve you. May these gifts and our very selves be of service to you, sharing the story of grace that never ends. Amen. This is God's table, a feast that is a foretaste of heavenly reunion, a feast of grace, a feast where all are welcome and remembered. You are invited, you are welcome. Join me in the great prayer of thanksgiving using your bulletins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of every time and place, you created all that was, you nurture all that is, you imagine all that will be. You are the pattern of community, three in one, God of mercy. From the beginning of time, you have created us for relationship with one another, with the earth, and with you. When we reject your call to community, choosing isolation over partnership and brokenness over healing, you call us back again and again with words of grace and the promise of new life. Remembering that we are not alone at this table, we join our voices with all the saints from all times and all places who forever sing your praise, holy, 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 the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. We give you thanks for Jesus Christ, our host and our guest at this table. Through his birth, you took on flesh, affirming the goodness of our bodies and our world. Through his life, you took on suffering, sharing the truth of hope and desperation. Through his death, you took on death, revealing the depth of your love for us. Through his resurrection, you brought new creation, embodying the promise of life everlasting. On the night before he met with death, Jesus came to the table with those he loved. He took bread and praised you, God of all creation. He broke the bread, saying, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, broken for you. Then he took the cup and gave thanks to you, God of all creation. He passed the cup among his disciples and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of the new covenant, sealed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With thanksgiving, we take this bread and this cup, the gifts of the earth through which you bless us, and we offer ourselves in your service. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit upon us, O God, and upon these gifts of fruit and grain, that we may taste your goodness, see your presence, and become one with you and your body. Gathered at your table, we join all your saints who have gone on before us and remember them now before you. In life and in death, we belong to you, our Alpha and Omega. All thanks and praise to you, O God, holy three in one, now and forever. Amen. Each time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until Christ comes again, and Christ will come again. The gifts of God for the people of God.
Will you once more join your hearts with me in prayer? God of glory, in this holy feast, you have made us one with Christ. And with that great multitude of the faithful, we pray here from the middle of our story, knowing that you are the author and perfecter of our faith and of our lives. We pray here with plenty of reasons to weep, knowing that you wipe away our tears. We pray here with hearts full of grief, knowing that grief persists because love persists. Believing that you are love and you are with us in our sorrow, may we be the ones who comfort others as you have comforted us. Awaken us to the longings of your children and of your creation, so we may be peacemakers and grace bearers. We seek heaven here on earth and the laughter of loved ones and memories shared of those we miss. We seek heaven here on earth by following your example, joining our voices with Christians in every time and place and praying the prayer you taught us, praying our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's rise and sing together our closing hymn, number 375, Shall We Gather at the River? Nourished here, let's remember that this is the middle of the story. 
Sometimes the story brings tears. And our eternal, everlasting God of resurrection, the one who swallowed death, the one who invites us to whisper, believe, shout, O oh death, where is your sting? That same God wipes away our tears. That same God also weeps out of love for us and is ever present with us, loving us more than we can imagine. And now, may God hear and respond whenever you may call. May Christ be made known to you in all things. May the Holy Spirit open our eyes and fill our hearts with love. We go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.